Hi, seventh grade. This is Miss Rossi here. Today I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about watercolor techniques. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the supplies you're going to need for today. You're obviously going to need your paintbrush and your paints. You're going to need a little bit of water, some paper towels, your paper, and you're also going to want some salt, some tape, a white crayon, and some rubber cement. I'm going to teach you seven techniques today, but the goal is for you to show me at least three of them. So please make sure that even though I, throw, I show you seven, um, please make sure you show me at least three of them. Feel free to show me more than that, but you have to show me at least three. So I do want to show you what this will look like when it's finished. Um, here you're going to see all seven of the techniques demonstrated. Um, this is what it'll look like when you put it on the drying rack. Um, you want to make sure again that you're showing me at least three of these. So if you have more than three, that's great, but you want to make sure that you fill your entire paper because this is going to be the background of your piece. So it's really important we fill that whole space and that there's no blank areas left. So here I'm going to show you how to use the supplies that you've gathered. So the first thing I have is rubber cement. Um, guys, you really don't need a lot of this stuff. Uh, wipe off any excess that you have. Yes, it smells bad. Just don't smell it. It's like the same thing as smelling a Sharpie. Just don't do it. So I'm going to put just a little bit on here. Really important that you do this first because this needs to dry. You do not want to paint right over top of this because that would be bad. You are going to ruin my brushes if you do that. So. You can just leave that alone, come back and look at it later. Um, the next one I'm gonna show you is called wet on wet. So this technique, you're going to make like a little bit of a puddle on your page, so just plain water. And then you're gonna pick up some color and you're going to just drop that right into that puddle. Um, I have found that the more paint you pick up with this, the better and the darker the colors are, the better, because then you're gonna see that a lot better. So um, see here when I start adding violet, you can see a little bit better. Um, this is definitely a really fun one to look at and a really fun one to do. Kind of looks like tie-dye almost, um, but this is really fun because you can also pull the colors out of the puddle if you want to um, and play with sort of where all the stuff is on there. You want to leave that alone then after, let that dry so that way everything stays in its place. The next one is tape. So if any of you have ever had the issue with putting tape on your paper, you go to take it off and what happens? Your paper rips. So to avoid this, we wanna put the tape onto our clothes first, get some of those fuzzies on there, take the tape off and then put it on our paper. Because when you do this, you're making the tape a little bit less sticky. So then that way when we go to pull that off, it's not going to do that. So um, once we do this, you can just paint right over top of that tape and then eventually in a couple days when we go to pull this tape off, it's just going to be plain white underneath there. Um, remember, for this assignment, you want to fill the whole space, that whole paper. This is going to be your background. You only get one day to do it. So I'm going in here and I'm filling in all those white spaces around the tape eventually again it will come off and it will be white under there and it's okay if it's white that's fine um, we can go in and write some stuff later so the next one is the white crayon technique this is really important you do this part first it's kind of like making easter eggs so you draw on there first with white crayon and then you paint over top of it with whatever colors you want and whatever design you had with the white crayon shows up here I am again just filling in these little areas to make sure that I'm filling my entire paper because again this is really important it's your background and you're putting stuff on top of it so we don't want to be stuck with any blank areas on our paper. I'm trying here to avoid the other techniques that I've done. If you want to mix them together that's fine just know that the results are going to be different than what um, you're seeing that I have on my paper. Okay. So the next one is the salt technique. This one's really fun. For this one you're laying uh, your paint down first. So over here I'm going to just grab a cool color. I'm going to lay that on my paper. And then again I found that with this technique the darker the color the more you notice it. Um, so eventually what's going to happen here is you're going to take just a pinch of salt. You're going to put that on and then eventually once this dries the salt is going to soak up some of the water but also some of the color. So it's going to leave this really cool sort of frosted windshield effect. Um, that's what it kind of reminds me of, a little bit of geo-looking 
Um, but also you want to leave that alone once it's done because if you mix any water in it, you're not going to see that result of like the crystallized effect. Okay. So the, one of the next ones we have here is I'm going to go in with a dark color. This is the paper towel technique. So for this, we're subtracting. So this is a subtractive technique. I'm laying my color down first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a dry paper towel and I'm going to crumble that up. And it's almost kind of like using a stamp, but it's the opposite. So instead of putting ink onto the paper, you're taking it off. So you're gonna see all those little wrinkles that you made when you crumbled up your paper towel. And again, this technique works best, I think, with darker colors. So we've gone over six of the techniques so far. We're gonna come back to the rubber cement, but here I'm noticing, okay, I have this big blank area left. I have one more technique to go over. So I'm going over the rest of my area first because for this technique, you have to have a background color before doing this particular step. This is a favorite technique. A lot of people really like this, but it can get messy. So this is the splatter technique. So remember, doing the splatter technique, you have to have a color down first before you do the splatter. Just an FYI, you are not in Harry Potter, you are not a wizard. You are going to pick up your paintbrush. It is not to be used like a wand, okay? We're not waving it around everywhere. You're just tapping. So big thing here is that if the paper is still wet, all that water is gonna spread out. So where it looks blurry, that's where the water is still there. Where it's dry, it's gonna be more like that galaxy effect, okay? So now I'm done with that. I can come back to my rubber cement. It looks like it's good to go. If it's on your hands when you touch it, not good to go. Leave it alone. If it's sticky, that's fine. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna grab my color, and I'm gonna paint right over top of that sticky rubber cement. You're gonna see some water droplets start to form over top of that, which is totally fine. That's what you're gonna see when you eventually take this off. So fill in that whole area, and then eventually um, you're gonna rub your paper, all of the salt, all the rubber cement, and then obviously you'll take the tape off also. So here I'm making sure that all of the area is filled, I'm ready to go, and that's all we have. That's the end of making your background. So here is what you will be left with once you are completely done with this part of your assignment. So once we put all of our stuff onto the drying rack, we're gonna give it a couple days and then you are going to then take off the tape, the rubber cement and the salt, and you will be left with something like this. Eventually then you'll be working with making symbols that have meaning to you and your interests and then you will be filling the inside of a letter with those symbols and you're gonna be gluing that work on top of the piece that you just made. So here is what the final result of your project is going to be. The background you're making is what you're looking at, but you're also gonna be making a lot of symbols that tell me a little bit about yourself. You're gonna put these in the shape of your initial and you're gonna glue this over top of the piece that you just made. So this is what your final project will look like when you're all finished. Now go ahead, do this yourself, and have some fun. Remember, this is the only day you get to do this, so make sure you fill your paper, show me your favorite techniques, and again, have some fun. Enjoy!